All right, today's lesson, uh, we went through and built on what we did last time with factoring um, to continue to do some factoring. We're going to do more next time as well. So uh, make sure that you're practicing on each assignment until you're completely comfortable uh, with being able to go through that. Um, I just want to go through the bell ringer as a reminder of what we did last time. Um, we practiced identifying factors, right? So factoring is the opposite of multiplication. When we multiply, um, we're expanding it into standard form. This is our standard form here, this one or this one or this one. We want to write it in factored form. So we want it to look more like this so that we can solve. Um, so on the first ones, again, just reminding each of us how to do that. Um, we look at each of the terms and we find what's divisible or factors out of each of those. So it looks like we've got an 8 and a 24. So again, factors of 8, right? Like 1, 2, 4, 8. Um, factors of 24, there's a lot of them. 1, 2, <clears throat> uh, let's see, 3, right? 4, um, 8 times 3, we got 6, we got 12. There's a bunch of them. Um, the biggest one that they share, right, is going to be 8. So we're looking for the greatest common factor. And then notice this guy has three ends, and that one has one. So they have at least one in common. So when we're talking greatest common factor, we're finding what's common there. So they have an 8 divisible, and an n divides out of both of those. Um, <clears throat> let's just look at the next ones. So notice here you've got three terms. Uh, this last term doesn't have an x, so we're not going to worry about taking out a variable. Um, but these three values are all divisible by 3. So our greatest common factor here is going to be 3. Again, looking at the bottom one, we've got 3v squared plus 21v minus 6. Again, 3, right, is the only thing that divides out of all of those. So our greatest common factor is 3. We identify the greatest common factor, again, so that we can write it in factored form. So whatever your greatest common factor is, you're going to pull that out front. I'm going to erase these. And you're going to divide it out of each piece because we're factoring it out. So if it helps to write it underneath the term, you can to help remind you what you're dividing out. So in this first term, we're going to cancel those 8s or those divide to be a 1. And if I have n cubed and I divide out one of the n's, that leaves me with n squared. So over here in my parentheses, I'm going to write n squared. Then I look at the next term. I have 24 divided by 8, and then those n's will cancel there. So 24 divided by 8 is 3. This right here is my factored form. Okay. On the next one, again, we're dividing out of 3. So think about dividing out of 3 from each term. So if you divide a 3 out of that first term, um, we put the 3 out front, and we need 3 terms inside the parentheses. So the first one would be 3x squared. Divide 3 out of the negative 12x, we get negative 4x. And 3 divided by 3 is just 1. Again, on that last one, we're pulling a 3 out. Um, that would leave us with v squared plus 7v minus 2. So again, you're dividing that 3 out. If you need to write it underneath to divide it out, you can to help you simplify. We write it in factored form so that we can apply the zero product property. So remember, we talked about if we have two things that are multiplying to equal 0, like if I have a times 4 is equal to 0, um, the only number times 4 that could equal 0 would be a 0. So we know that if we have things multiplying to 0, that one of them needs to equal 0. So essentially what we're saying is p minus 4 could equal 0, that piece, um, in which case p, right, would equal a positive 4. So that's one of the solutions that works in our equation. Or from this, right, we got p plus 13. What would make that equal 0? Well, that would be a negative 13 right, added to 13 would be 0. So those are our two solutions. Um, on number 4, again, we say what would make this equal 0? Well, 0 itself. Um, what would make x minus 8 equal 0? And that would be a positive 8. So we're just finding the pieces there. On number 5, this is the one you're walking through the steps that we finished at the end of the last video. So step number 1 is always move all the terms to one side. Uh, we're going to take this 8h, and we're going to subtract him from this side over to the right-hand side. That leaves a 0, which is exactly what we want to use the zero product property. And we have 4h squared subtracting 8h. Now, the right-hand side of this equation looks like the polynomials we were practicing factoring. We look for a greatest common factor. In this case, it's 4h. 
4 divides out of both of those as well as an h can. So if I divide 4h into that, I just have an h left here. And negative 8h divided by 4h is a negative 2. Now it's in factored form. We can solve um, this piece right here, right? If I have 4 times 0, so if h is 0, then that equation works. And over here, if I'm looking at this piece right here, I say what minus 2 would equal 0. And the 0 for that piece would be a positive 2. Now remember, if we were to go graph these, um, this would cross at those x-intercepts on our graph. So you could graph these and then kind of check your answers if you'd like to. So let's talk about factoring um, a trinomial. So our learning target was to be able to factor a trinomial to solve. Um, quadratics are going to be huge for the next couple months. Um, remember, quadratics have a degree of 2. So anything that's like x squared as its biggest term. And it can be written in different forms. So we're going to practice with these different forms. Um, the first one is standard form. okay? And if you look at this one, this is the one we've been multiplying to put polynomials into. Um, notice it has a squared piece right here. Then it just has the x piece and then the constant. That's just a numerical value if a, b, and c are numerical values. Um, <clears throat> and what we want to do is we want to put it into factored form. So if we can um, take out the greatest common factor here, that would be like the a value, and then we can write it as a multipl like as factors being multiplied to zero, then we can quickly solve, right? This would represent one of the solutions would come from here, and one of the solutions would come from here, and we could actually go through and solve this equation. So that's our goal is to put it into factored form so that we can solve. Um, as we do this, I want us to FOIL these out and to look for some patterns. So I'm going to quickly FOIL these out. Um, again, just multiplying them. So notice the first one's already done for us. x times x gives us that x squared at the beginning. Um, x times 9, that's that 9x. Um, 4 times x is that 4x. And then 4 times 9 is that positive 36. These two in the middle are like terms, so we combine them and we end up with x squared plus 13x plus 36. Uh, if we do the same thing, moving to the right, notice here we get x squared. x times negative 9 is negative 9x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x. And negative 4 times negative 9 would equal a positive 36. Again, if we combine those middle terms, we end up with x squared minus 13x plus 36. And we keep going to the next one. We go x times x. We get x squared. Um, x times negative 9 is negative 9x. 4 times x is a positive 4x. And positive 4 times negative 9 is a negative 36. Uh, that leaves us with x squared. If we combine these, that's a negative 9x plus 4 would be a negative 5x. Subtract 36. Then this last one, um, we're going to go x times x, which would give us x squared. Um, x times 9, positive 9x. Negative 4 times x is negative 4x, and a negative 4 times a positive 9 is a negative 36. Again, combining those middle terms, uh, we get 9x minus 4x is a positive 5x, and we get subtract 36. Now, <clears throat> again, our goal is to be able to take this trinomial today and to go backwards. So in order to do so, we want to look for some patterns that would help us identify where in the world would we come up with the 4 and the 9 when you don't even see a 4 and the 9 in your final result. Um, how do we know that it's always x and always x? Right? Those are questions that we're going to ask. How do we know whether they're both negative or whether there's a positive guy and a negative factor? So um, looking at these patterns, there's a few things I want you to notice. And the first is looking at this last number and his sign. Notice that this is a positive 36 because a positive number times a positive number always gives us a positive number. Notice on the second example this is also a positive 36 because a negative number times another negative number gives us a positive 36. One of the patterns that we're going to continually look for when I'm looking to figure out how to factor a trinomial is I look at this second sign, and I'm going to write it down here below. I'm going to put a plus sign here as one of our examples. Um, <clears throat> I always look at this second sign in the polynomial. This tells me, um, if it's positive, that my factors will have the same sign. 
right? So same sign, meaning either both of these pieces will be positive values, right, where everything was positive, or maybe both of them have negative values, as we saw in this second example. We've got a negative 4 and a negative 9. Notice how that's different in the next two examples. Um, this one has a negative 36, the green one, uh, and that would be because these are different signs. When I take a positive 4 and I multiply it by a negative 9, I'm going to end up with a negative value. Or if the negative 4 multiplies by the positive 9, as it did on the right example, uh, then I get, again, a negative 36. So anytime, and I'm going to write this in the next part, anytime I have a subtraction sign here, I know that the factors have different signs. Okay, so we're going to write different signs. That just means that as I'm factoring down, one of them will be positive, the other one will be negative. Now, it doesn't matter which one you write it in at this point. Um, you just have to make sure when we actually come up with numbers, you're putting the correct numerical values in. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so the question is then, how do we know about the other, or what does the other sign tell us? I don't want you to worry as much about that. Um, but I'm going to kind of walk you through on these next three examples. So if we look down here at these three, uh, notice that if you look at this um, last sign right here, that's the one we're talking about, it kind of tells us. Now this is a positive uh, value, so that means that they're going to have the same sign. But if you look at this sign, it's negative. So everything can't be positive. What that means is that both of these must be negative values. If we look at the middle one, um, notice here we have a positive 20 at the end. So positive again means that we're looking at something with the same sign. Um, this one, however, has a positive up here too. So when everything is positive, then the results, the factors are also going to be positive. Okay. Looking at this last one, <clears throat> this negative 48, right? Remember, if it's a negative, that means that they're going to have different signs. So when we come up with our solutions here, one of them would be positive and one of them would be negative. So it's really important that we're just understanding what we're looking for there. Um, coming back up to the 4 and 9 example, um, I'm going to kind of think about going backwards, even though we know what it's going to look like. Um, <clears throat> let's look at this first one. Um, if I'm looking at this x squared plus 13x plus 36 here, uh, the question then is, this trinomial I know is going to factor into two binomials, so how do we split it up? Well, you'll recall that multiplying, right, we FOIL it out, and every time we FOILed and we did the first times first, we got like x squared on each one of these, x squared, x squared, x squared. So it's pretty easy to pull apart the first piece of your trinomial. Um, you're just going to split it up an x in one of the factors, and an x is going to be in the next factor as well. That way, when we create this, our first times first is going to be x times x. That would give us the x squared. Um, the next easiest piece to look at is the last number, uh, because the middle numbers are combining, right? So the 9 and 4 we don't actually see in here, but the 36 helps us to identify some factors that could give us that middle number. So what we do is we take 36 and we list factor pairs that could multiply um, to 36 because we know that this last times last up here is what gave us the 36. So things that multiply to 36 could be 1 and 36, could be 2 and 18, or 3 and 12, or 4 and 9, or 6 and 6, right? All of those are factor pairs, and if they were put at the end of these factors, when we multiplied them, they would give us 36. Now the question is, is there only one that works? Yes, because we need to end up with this 13 in the middle. So once I have these two factors, right, um, they need to add to that middle term. So notice 1 and 36, if I were to add those, I get 37. That does not add to 13 which is my middle term. If I have 2 and 18, that adds to 20. 3 and 12, that adds to 15. Um, but 4 plus 9, right, this is where we would get that 13. So we know that these are both going to be positive and that this could be a 4 and this could be a 9. And then again, I could check my answer and FOIL that out. Now if we look over at the third example, the green one that I did on here, um, Again, if I was factoring this one back out, 
I would create my two binomial factor pieces. And the x squared, again, is pretty easy to split up. We just know that it's going to be an x here and an x here. With the 36, however, as I list those factors, right, that would be what I would do. And again, it was 1 and 36, 2 and 18, 3 and 12, 4 and 9, 6 and 6. Um, notice that when we look at this one, we know that that's a negative 36. So that tells us the signs in here are going to be different, one negative and one positive. So when you're looking for a combination, those factors had a difference of the middle term, or the negative 5x. So we want to find the difference. So if I look at all my factor pairs, right, the difference between 1 and 36, or 1 minus 36, right, that's a huge difference, like 35. Um, 18 and 2, they have a difference of 16, or they subtract to 16. 3 and 12, they have a difference of 9, so we don't want that one either. Um, but 4 and 9, they have a difference of 5. And if I want it to, when I combine them, it to be a negative 5, then I need that 9 to be negative, because 4 minus 9 is going to give me that negative 5 I'm looking for. So when I put these into the parentheses, I'm going to put the 4 with the positive, and then the negative I need to make sure goes with the 9. So that's how we're going to kind of tell what we're looking at there. Again, this blue example on the end would be very similar, right? We know it's going to use that 4 and the 9 and the x and the x, um, only it has a positive 5 in the middle, so that 9 would need to be positive because we would subtract the 4 and end up with a positive 5. All right, those are the patterns. Um, let's see if we can apply them. So you turn over to the back again. You're going to practice factoring just with expressions, and then you'll solve a few of them. Um, so looking at the first one, and you can walk through these steps one at a time, but the first thing we always do is make sure it's written in standard form. So we have our squared term, we have the middle term, and then our constant. That makes sure that our patterns are going to work. Um, factor out the greatest common factor if there is one. So we say, is there anything in all these three terms that factors out? Well, it looks like they're all divisible by 2. So we are going to, just like last assignment, factor out a 2 into the front. In other words, you're dividing out a 2. Now, the 2 doesn't just disappear. It's still there. Um, we're just moving it to the front. So we get x squared. 20x divided by 2 is 10x. And 32 divided by 2 is 16. Okay. Now notice on the inside of the parentheses, we have a trinomial. We have x squared plus 10x plus 16. So we know that we can go ahead and try and factor that into a um, pair of binomials. Now notice I'm not putting an addition sign or a subtraction sign or anything in between because these are multiplied together, right? They're factors. So <clears throat> again, we're going to walk through the steps we did on the front. The first thing we want to do is look at our signs. Notice this is a positive 16. So we know they're going to be the same, and everything is positive. The other sign is also positive, so we know this is going to be a positive and a positive. Then we look at the x squared, and we just split the x squared up into both parts. So if that's x squared, this is going to be x, this is going to be x. Then we move to the last term, and we list its factor pairs. So that would be like 1 times 16 is 16, uh, 2 times 8, 4 times 4, and we look for things, again, these have the same sign, so they need to add to give us the middle term of 10x. So if we add these, we get 17, right? That one doesn't work. If we add 2 plus 8, we end up getting 10, so that guy works. So we're going to use 2 as one of our factors and 8 as one of our factors. Um, and that's it. That's your factored form. It's as far as you can go. So it's a matter of understanding and trying to play with those patterns. It feels kind of like a puzzle and putting them together. Okay, let's do a few more of them. Again, I'm just going to walk through those same steps. So example number two, it says factor the expression. The first thing I always do, make sure it's in standard form. And then I ask, is there a greatest common factor? Um, no factor, right, greater than one that's going to divide out of these. So we just start by breaking it apart. Um, again, notice the sign here is negative 9 at the end, so that means these are going to be different. So one's positive, one's negative. The next thing I do is split up the n squared, so I have n and n. Then I list factors of 9. So 1 and 9, 
3, and 3. These ones are different signs, so again, they need to have a difference, or I always just think about it as subtract to the middle term. So 3 and 3 won't work because they are the same number. They'll subtract to 0. So we need to use 1 and 9, and notice that it's a negative 8n in the middle. So if I do 1 minus 9, that would give me a negative 8n. So I'm going to put the 1 here with the positive value and the 9 in with the negative value, and that's my factored form. Um, again, we go to example 3. The first thing we do, make sure it's in standard form. Then we ask, is there a greatest common factor? doesn't look like there's anything that divides out of this. So we are just going to break this apart and think about our rules. Again, we look here. This is a negative 15, so we know that the values must be different, or the signs, sorry. And we split apart the p squared, so we get p and p. And then we look at factors of 15. So if you think about factors of 15, that would be like 1 and 15, or 3 and 5. Again, they need to subtract to the middle because they're different. So we want them to subtract to 2. So 1 and 15 don't subtract to the value 2, but 3 and 5 are 2 units apart. And we want it to be a positive 2. So we're going to let the 5 be positive and the 3 be negative. And we get to put them into our factored parts. Now, that's really what your, what your goal is, to be able to factor, 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 factor. And then there's a few at the end of your homework that you're going to practice with that's actually solving. So once we become pretty good at factoring, we can actually use it as a tool to solve. So notice um, the steps are the same, right? We have this polynomial here. Now it's just set equal to 0. Um, up here, there's not really nothing more you can do. We just changed it from this form to factored form. On example 4 and 5, we can now actually solve, so combine what we did on the last homework. So notice I'm going to follow the same steps, and don't get lazy and lose your notation. Keep your 0 equals there, so that you remember that it's equal to something. And then we look for a greatest common factor. Now notice all of these terms here are divisible by 2, so we divide a 2 out, pull it to the front. If I divide a 2 out of that, I get x squared. If I divide a 2 out of the middle term, I get 5x and divide a 2 out of 12, I end up with 6. Okay. Again, we've got a trinomial, so we're going to do 2, and we're going to factor that trinomial. Um, notice everything is positive. We've got a positive 6 and a positive 5, so this is all going to be positive. And we then split up the x, so x and x. Then we look at last times last, so we're looking at this value of 6, right? And his factors would be like 6 and 1, or 2 and 3. And notice that we want them to add to 5. So 6 minus 1 would give us a 5, but we're not doing different signs. They're the same, so we want it to add to equal 5. So we're going to use the values 2 and 3. Once you've factored it, um, then you can solve, right? So now we have um, this on the right side. So just like in our bell ringer, we look at each piece and we say what value, right, x plus 2 needs to equal 0, well, <clears throat> that would be a negative 2. So we didn't really write out all of these ones, but we know that one of the solutions would be x equals negative 2, and the other solution would be x equals negative 3. Okay, so factoring is the tool that allows us to solve. Again, just going through the steps. Factor and solve n squared minus 11n plus 24 equals 0. 1, it's equal to 0. 2, is there a greatest common factor? No, so we just move forward, factoring it into the two binomials. Um, again, I look at this second sign, it's positive, so I know they're going to be the same. But when I look up here, it's negative, so that means that they're both negative. I split up the n squared, get n and n. Uh, I then look at factors of 24. So factors of 24 would be 1 and 24, 8 and 3, 6 and 4. 2 and 12, and these factors, right, they need to add, because they have the same, um, to negative 11. Now, it's a negative 11, right, meaning that all these values, when they combine, they're going to be negatives. Um, they'll add to a negative value or subtract. So, when we look at this, um, negative 1 plus negative 24, that's negative 25, so that doesn't work. Um, the next one is 8 and 3, that one looks like it works. 
that would give us 11, so we put in an 8, we put in a 3, and then again we go one step further on these ones because they're equal to 0 and we solve. So n would be equal to a positive 8, and n would be equal to a positive 3. Okay, um, very similar on 6, so I'm just going to walk through these. Again, it's equal to 0, we look for a greatest common factor. Now all of these terms can be divided, divided by 3, so we divide that out. Um, I would recommend maybe that you pause the video and see if you can work through a couple of these and then work through and check it with me. So we're just factoring here. Again, that's a negative 30, so I know one's positive, one's negative. I split up the p-values. Um, factors of 30, I'm just going to write them off to the side. So like 2 and 15, 6 and 5, um, 30 and 1, and I need to have a difference of 7. So if we're looking at this, looks like I need more factors. None of those have a difference of 7, right? Um, we could also do 10 times 3. So there we go, difference of 7. We want it to be a positive 7p, so the big number gets to be positive. So I'm going to put in the 3 and the 10. And then I go ahead and solve, and I get p is equal to negative 10 from that piece, and p is equal to positive 3 for that piece. On the last one, this one's not in standard form, so we want to move it to be in standard form, so the x squared gets moved to the front. Um, the 7x gets to go next, and then we have 12 is equal to 0. Uh, we go ahead and factor that one because there's not a greatest common factor. Uh, we split up the x and x. Everything's positive in this one, so we're just going to put positives in. And then we need some factors of 12 that are going to add to 7, that middle term of 7x. So we've got, it looks like, 3 and 4 or 2 and 6, although we look at that, 3 and 4 works. So 3 plus 4 would give us that middle term of 7x. So then we solve, and x would be equal to negative 3. Or we ask what would make this piece 0. Well, if x is negative 4, negative 4 plus 4 would be 0. Okay. Again, there's a note here at the bottom that just says, if the polynomial is not factorable, it's called a prime polynomial. Um, a pride and quadratic polynomial means that this equation cannot be solved using factoring. So we will learn other methods. Um, not all of them are factorable, but if it's factorable, this is the fastest way to solve. Uh, again, you're going to practice on quite a few that are just expressions. So the first bunch on your homework, you're just practicing that first step of factoring, uh, making sure that we're understanding the pattern. Then on the last um, 10 or so, you're actually solving. So you don't need to go this whole step um, unless it's equal to zero and you're actually solving the equation. Okay, work through that. Let me know if you have any